Hey guys, welcome to another cut up video. Today I'll be looking at, by popular demand, this filter here from Amsoil. As always, this filter fits the same vehicle as all the other filters I've looked at so far on this channel. So if you're familiar with my content or you check anything out uh, afterwards, just know that this is an apples to apples kind of comparison. Now, if you're not familiar with kind of my standard rundown, what I'm gonna do is talk about the packaging and everything you can kind of observe about the exterior of the filter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it open to show you guys uh, what the filter cartridge on the inside actually looks like, as well as some other details like the design of the emergency bypass valve and whatnot. So that's what I'm gonna do with this guy. Um, before I continue, I do wanna point out that filters from Amsoil are kinda of hard to come by. I didn't realize that it would be such a challenge, but the only two places I could even find these things online were Amsoil's own website and eBay. And from either place to get one of these shipped was gonna come to a total of about 25 bucks, which is a lot for an oil filter. I The most expensive I had ever seen up till this point was about 15 bucks for this royal purple here. And even that's a lot. And I, 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 I don't know, I find it hard to believe that any of you guys are looking to spend that kind of money. So to be fair to Amsoil though, they do have a local vendor, retailer, finder on their website. So if you type in your zip code as well as the model number for what you're looking for, they will show you where you can get it locally. Now when I did that, the only places I could find were kind of smaller performance or repair shops. No big name chain retailers came up like I was kind of hoping for, like no AutoZones, no O'Reilly's. So if any of you out there are aware of where you can get these things from kind of like a big name brand chain, please say so in the comments if you don't mind. So that way the rest of us can benefit from that information. Anyway, so this guy was expensive. So just be aware of that if you're really interested in going after uh, an Amsoil filter. So um, starting off with the box, there are two things that um, are worth pointing out. If the model number didn't tip you off already, it's indicative of their 15,000 mile service inter interval warranty, provided you follow the little legalese here on the back, the fine print, if you will, that says they won't guarantee for more than a year of service and you have to use their Amsoil brand synthetic oil too. So that's not really an uncommon requirement when you look at some really high mileage guarantees from other manufacturers. So um, the second thing though that I wanna point out that I'm actually pretty impressed with from Amsoil is their little efficiency chart they have in the back. Not so much because they include information about the competition, but because they have their efficiency rating of 98.7, but they give the little details about what tests they use. This is the standard ISO 4548-12 test that pretty much everyone uses, but they also tell you what micron rating they were using. And that just tells you what size particles were they using when they were flow testing this guy, right? So smaller particles are harder to trap. So um, if you look at this Mobile One box, they advertise 99 plus percent efficiency for the same ISO test. Well, this is better, right? Well, look, they use 30 micron particles when they ran their test, which are 50% larger than what Amsoil used. So if you ran much bigger particles through the Amsoil, I'm sure this 98.7 would tick up into the 99 plus range like Mobile One does. So just, I point this out so that you can be aware that an efficiency rating from one filter to another is not always comparable. A lot of times manufacturers will show a, an efficiency rating only with no details on this test or they won't even bother showing that in the first place. So if you really care about this stuff, you have to either hope it's on the box or you'll have to dig it up on the website. And I have had, on rare occasion, but I've had to do it. I've had to reach out to customer service to get these kinds of details about a particular filter. So just thank you, Amsoil, for including it on your box. Anyway, um, when I pulled the filter out of the box, I found that it came in this pretty big plastic bag, which was great. A lot of times filters will just have really no protection other than the cardboard box they come in, but I have seen probably about half the time there's a little bit of shrink wrap of a covering over just the bottom portion here. And presumably that or the bag 
is to A, keep crud from getting in here and winding up in your engine ultimately, but also it's probably to keep any lubricated gaskets on the bottom from getting too dried out by the time before it reaches the end user. So it's good to see a bag when you pay $25. <laughs> Anyway, um, the weight of this guy measures around 292 grams, which is 10 to 12 grams shorter than these um, Mobile One and Royal Purple filters that I've got here. And the reason I've got these out is because they're awfully similar to the Amsoil in a lot of ways, which I'll get to. But for being a very similar design, this guy's a little bit lighter, maybe not even worth mentioning, because for filters for this same application, I've seen filters as light as 220 something grams and as heavy as 350. So this is kind of the middle of the road. Um, as far as the case itself goes, it's again, extremely similar to these other ones. They're probably these, the filters from Mobile One, Royal Purple and Amsoil here are probably all made from the same manufacturer like Champion Labs or something. I don't know, but that's very, very common when you see similar designs. I know, um, I think Bosch and oh, what's um, Purelator are both made by the same place too. So I've seen, seen that before. Anyway, looking at the underside, starting with the gasket, this is an um, HNBR gasket, and you can see that it's trapped really well by this undercut kind of racetrack seal here in the, in the folded metal. That's great because it hangs on to this thing really well. What you don't want to have happen is for you to go ahead and unscrew this guy when you go to change it out later, and this thing comes off and stays on your engine. Because if you don't notice when that happens and you put a new filter on top of it, it'll get balled up and all your engine will leak out because it didn't seal right. Now, when I first started reviewing oil filters, I never even thought of that possibly happening, but more than one person told me that that has happened to them before and it causes problems. So just know that with a design like this, it's not an issue. And just to be fair, the people that brought that up didn't say that happened with this brand. It was with a different design, I think. Anyway, moving on to the inlet holes here. There are five inlet holes, four are the same size, one is larger. Why that is, I don't know, maybe for manufacturing or something, but I measured them and they're the same as the Mobile One Royal Purple again. And the combined inlet area is about 0.27 square inches, if you do the math. And I do want to point out that if you get an up close look at the side of the hole, you can get a feel for how thick that tapping plate is. Thicker is better in this case, so I just want to let you guys see that. And while we're, we've got an up close look, you can see there's the silicone anti drain back valve right here. Um, silicone is pretty much what everyone uses. I will say maybe two plus years ago, Fram had on their low end, I think, a regular nitrile rubber gasket and really silicone is superior when it comes to more extreme temperature ranges so that's probably why everyone is using it but that's standard lastly there is the center hole this is an m20 by 1.5 thread and i've seen that now this guy has four and a half to five full threads here I've seen as low as three and a half on really cheap filters, but never more than five. So this is about as good as good as it gets in that department. So that's pretty much everything I had to talk about from an exterior perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy open so we can get a look at what's inside. Okay, so here are all the filters cut open. I took some calipers and put them on the walls of the cases and verified that they are the heavier 20 thousandths thick gauge. Usually you will find that filters come in either the heavier 20 thou gauge or a lighter 15 thou. So these all three have, have the heavier cases, which is nice. Moving on down a little bit, here is the uh, spring that rests against the inside of the case and keeps the filter cartridge pressed down against the seal on the anti-drain back valve. Now the stamp sheet metal design doesn't look all that elegant, but there is some beauty in its simplicity, I would say, and probably cost effectiveness over the coil spring design that you'll find 
in other filters. And this one's from uh, this KN Performance Silver here. So those are really the only two designs you'll see. And all three of these just use the same sheet metal style. Moving on down a little bit, here is the top of the filter cartridge. And what you see in the center here is the emergency bypass valve. And what that does is it allows oil to flow past this seal in the event that your filter gets so full that it's, it's clogged, essentially. When that happens, the oil pressure will rise to the point where the pressure of the oil pushing on the seal will compress the spring and cause it to open. So what will happen is your oil, while dirty, will still continue to flow through the filter rather than just be blocked entirely. So that's what that does. All three of these guys use the same design, so there's not much to compare one to the next in that regard. Moving down further, here is the center tube that you find in the middle of the filter cartridge. Here is just the basic construction, and this is the tube on the inside that just kind of helps hold things together and support the pleats. There are two different designs that you'll see. The first is what the Royal Purple and Amsoil filters have, which is a single axial seam versus this little more complicated, maybe more three-dimensional helical style that the Mobile One has. And you can see that seam kind of uh, curls around the outside. Now, when I squeeze these things with my fingers, I can feel the single axle design giving a lot more readily. So I'm, I'm confident I can squish this thing a lot more easily than this guy. So from a strength perspective, I would, uh, I would definitely say the Mobile One is, is better than these other guys here. Uh, moving down a little bit further, here is the inside of the tapping plate, just so you can take a closer look at it. And what sits on top of it is the anti-drain back valve that we saw earlier just from the other side. Now all this thing is, is just a molded piece of silicone that's basically just a check valve, okay? When your engine is running, oil is flowing up and in through these holes around the outside, and that will flow past this, uh, this lip here. And when you shut your engine off, it will shut like that and seal close to keep the dirty oil in your filter from draining out, okay? That keeps the dirty oil in your filter, but it also keeps oil in your filter, period, to prevent dry starting. So that's just what that does if you're not familiar, okay? And like I said, all three of these are silicone. They're pretty much the same other than color. <laughs> Uh, lastly, and probably most importantly, is the filter media. Now, there are, as I've gone through different filters, there's two general approaches that manufacturers use. The first is to use a fully synthetic media, which, which we've got here in the Amsoil and the Royal Purple. The fully synthetic media is finer, so it can trap smaller, tinier particles than the more traditional cellulose, wood pulp, paper, or even synthetic blend materials can capture, and the Mobile One here has a uh, synthetic blend, okay? So you get a higher degree of filtration efficiency with this guy, and it's also got a wire mesh behind it, and the Mobile One does not have that, okay? Now what that results in is you've got a pretty widely spaced pattern of pleats as you see that they're folded back and forth on, in the cartridge. Now that's nice for strength, it's nice for um, in some ways flow because it keeps the pleats from being all smashed together too tightly, but it leaves a whole lot less room for just adding more pleats, which is what Mobile One did, okay? So if when I cut these guys open and stretch them all out, now these are just little samples, I, I, I cut them, but when I measured the total length, I got you know 32 something inches on the Amsoil, maybe closer to 36 here on the Royal Purple, but you get nearly twice that with the Mobile One when you forego the wire backing and such. So this is nearly 60 inches. So between having a lot more total filter area and combine that with the fact you're not filtering out particles that are so tiny, that I'm sure is, I'm sure there's more to it than just that, but that's probably the main means by which Mobile One can achieve the dirt capacity required to guarantee a 20,000 mile service interval versus you know a 15 or less for other filters. Okay, so. Uh, which is superior? It's it's hard to say because it really 
you have to ask what matters to you because if you care about filtering out the tiniest of particles, well, you're going to really be forced to go with this option where you have a fully synthetic media, okay? But what that's going to mean is A, probably higher cost because like I said, this guy was $25 and the Royal Purple is 15 I forget the Mobile One, but I've seen them probably for around 10 bucks if you go to Walmart. So you'll pay a little more for that and you just won't be able to drive as far or as long between oil changes. Now, 15 or 20,000 miles, most people I talk to aren't willing to drive even close to 15,000 before changing their oil anyway, so maybe this whole discussion is moot. So if that's your attitude and you just plan on changing your oil every 5,000 miles, sure, go with something that has you know a really high degree of filtration efficiency. Why not? But if you're one of those people that just wants to push the limit and see how long they can go between oil changes, which I don't really recommend, but if that kind of uh, fits your personality type more, then a mobile one is probably more suited to you. And uh, that's kind of the approach that k &N takes, actually. You can see that, that that's what they've got going on here in this Performance Silver. They, they don't have that wire mesh back, but they've got an awful lot of material. It's actually quite a bit taller than any of these other filters um, as well. So... That's pretty much all I had with these guys that I had to talk about. So if there's anything that I skipped or you would like to know that I didn't cover, please ask me in the comments and uh, hopefully I can respond to that at least in the notes section of the video. If you have other filters or brands that you want me to cover or that I haven't covered in quite a while that you want to see, uh, let me know so I can keep putting out content that you, that you guys are actually interested in. The reason I did the Amsoil today is because I saw a number of comments from you guys asking for it. So thanks for the feedback uh, on that. So that's pretty much all I've got. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.